a portion of a piece by the Syrian violin player named Sami Shawa, um, who recorded around the early 20th century. This is music that I would have heard when I, or did hear when I was a little kid growing up in New York. My father's family is from Aleppo, Syria. So we heard, I heard lots and lots of um, uh, Arabic music when I was a kid. As at the same time, um, My mother was born in the Ukraine, and she and I played a lot of klezmer music, and I heard a lot of uh, Yiddish songs uh, in, uh, when we did it in my mother's family. I want to play something that is different from what I just played, but very similar in the sense that they share the same scale, or makam. So this is called Candles Hora.
Welcome to the show, mm -hmm. Meeting Interesting People. Today, my guest, Beth Bahia Cohen. Mm -hmm. I call her a wizard of strings. Thank and you. so you can see that we have in the studio some uh, very exotic instruments. And uh, the viewers already heard <laughs> that you were having a connection with East and West. That's right. Yes. So, and um, we would like to hear more and hear more stories about the instruments. Okay. And, and then we will um, give you the opportunity to present your father's book because uh -huh. he was a poet. He was. Joseph Cohen. Um, and one of the poems you said you will be reading is um, dedicated to you. Yes, about me. About Very you. much so. About what, what we're doing here today, in fact. Lovely. Um, sure. So I was growing up. Um, I was a classic European classically trained violinist, and my mother was a pianist. Mm -hmm. And we so we, I had all kinds of music growing up, and so I was very interested in how the violin was played in other places, especially hearing Arabic violin was so different from Western European right. classical music. Right. Mm -hmm. So I went about um, after I was mm -hmm. free to travel at some point in my life after college, I started traveling. And I also, there are many musicians came here actually from other places. The first um, group of musicians that came here were from Hungary, from Budapest. Mm. And they were teaching and playing the village music of Hungary. This is the music that Béla Bartók went around and recorded and yeah. used as inspiration for his own compositions. Right. So um, I got very deep into that and mm. I, start, I had a group called Shar Khan, which mm -hmm. means dragon, mm -hmm. with my friends, um, two of my friends from Libana, which was a women's chorus I used to play in. I see. And um, so here's a little bit of something from Gimes, that's a region in Transylvania. So I can just visualize already the dance itself. The what? The dance? Yeah. Yes, and this was this is definitely a dance. Yeah. And we, as a group, Sharkan, we performed all over the U.S. and Canada, performing for dancing, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. We were a dance band. Yeah, and the horror, too, I was seeing how it's moving slowly. The what? Beautiful. The, dance? the first piece, you, one of the first pieces you played. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I, it was, it's not a big jump to get to play Romanian music mm -hmm. from Hungarian and I want to play you something here. This instrument, whoa, let me hold it. Oops. It's okay. That's good. Mm -hmm. It's a trumpet violin. Um, actually, this trumpet violin was used around 1900 everywhere in the world. They put trumpet horns on violins because they were recording in recording horns oh. and the violin wasn't loud enough so they didn't have microphones so I they see. used this uh, and then it, it went out of fashion because they the technology improved but it still remains an instrument that's played in Romania specifically a place called Bihor hmm. so I'm gonna play you this is this is actually an instrument that's very directional uh, I'm gonna maybe turn a little bit towards the microphone mm -hmm. so it can hear you can hear it better I know it sounds 
Very metallic, doesn't it? Yeah, so it's probably were a few uh, violins like that playing in a group that the sound will be louder? Um, yeah, they, they're usually, yeah, if you go to YouTube, you can put in Bihor, trumpet uh -huh. violin. Mm -hmm. There are whole groups of people playing them together, <laughs> actually. Um, then I, I think I'm going to play this Norwegian violin. Mm -hmm. It's called a Hardingfele. And, um, it's the, beautiful. It's like a piece of art. It's a piece of art. Literally, people um, painted or drew on, mm -hmm. painted um, flowers and plants mm -hmm. in the front and the back. It's so beautiful, it's isn't it? The inlay side. Right there. Beautiful inlay on the back, mm -hmm. inlay in the front, inlay on the fingerboard. The, f the pegs are very interesting. Oh, look at that. And then this is a dragon on every one of them. Wow. Let me just make sure I'm tuned. in nature you can see that oh how nice yeah well this instrument has uh, sympathetic strings that are b beneath the regular strings oh yeah it's so, like a double so the sympathetic strings don't get touched directly mm -hmm. but if they're tuned properly they will resonate and create uh, a reverb like I a natural see. reverb and speaking of natural reverb I want to play for you mm -hmm. a Turkish instrument called a yayla tambor that also has sympathetic strings. This instrument has strings. I'm playing in the upper two strings that are, look like one string, but they're mm. in the two in the same group. Mm. And the rest of them are sympathetic as well. So you'll hear a lot of reverb here. This is an instrument from Turkey. And um, I've been playing it for quite a while. Uh, and it's very beautiful, I think. Can you hear that? Yeah. a little improvisation oh, okay. in the, a makam called Segya. Mm -hmm. 
actually, maybe I'll play one more little thing. Mm -hmm. This is a Turkish ilahi, mm -hmm. which is a uh, devotional song from the Sufi tradition, which is the mystical branch of Islam. Mm. Uh, in the same maqam, say again. to be a student they should be going to Tufts or Berkeley College where are you teaching yes that's right but I also teach privately privately so they can find me yes um, and I love to teach all of these traditions and all these instruments but you have um, also I know collection of all those unique instruments yes maybe I could send you a picture that can yeah. be um, used yeah, yeah I have you can show. over the years I have collected a lot of instruments from all over and play most of them. Yeah, I know. Ah. You know I've seen sometimes you just take like around yourself so many different ones and that's right. Yeah. Performing uh, amazingly. Well, excellent. Um, thank you so much. And now we would love to hear your dad's poetry. May I play one more piece before Absolutely. we go switch yes. to my dad? Sure. This is um, because he mentions it in the in the poem. Mm -hmm. um, I also played uh, learned. Greek music for mm -hmm. many years mm -hmm. and traveled many times to Greece and played with lots and lots of groups and um, really explored how the violin is played in Greece. It's like 10 different countries. Mm. All the regional Greek viol violin music is mm -hmm. very distinct according to what area it is. Huh. And then in addition to that, there are other boat instruments I discovered mm -hmm. besides the violin. Mm -hmm. Maybe before the violin, they're they're called liras, and you yes. hold them on the right. You hold mm -hmm. them on the on the lap, play the hold the bow like this, and um, there's one. I have a Thracian lira from Thraki from Thrace, mm -hmm. Macedonian lira, Greek Macedonian lira, um, Cretan lira, and then there's also one called. Pontiaki Lira, mm. that's from the Black Sea mm. of Turkey and uh, refugees from that area when they resettled in northern Greece mainly, mm -hmm. they brought that tradition along. Mm -hmm. And all of this music is dance music. Yes. Right? So, um, uh, let's see. I'll play, so the violin is the lead instrument in all of the Greek islands. Mm -hmm. Mainland, the clarinet is more of the lead instrument. The violin mm -hmm. plays, but not as strong a role. So uh, I'll play something from the island of Noxus. to do both at the same time, but that's the dance, um, it's, it's called the Sirtos. And again, there's like hundreds of others. This is uh, one more from I the island of Ikari Ikaria, called Ikariotikos. Mm. <laughs> Thank 
Icarioticus. Icarioticus. Yes. So, my father, Joseph A. Cohen, um, was a businessman. He, uh, he was a businessman. He was a great photographer and photography teacher. Mm. In fact, when he, he lived to a hundred and a half, and when he came to Cambridge for the last six years of his life, he started teaching again photography. Wow. After, after about a year and a half, he settled in and then he started at 96 wow. started teaching again at Brandeis Osher lifelong learning Bali Institute and um, from and 96 to 98 then Amazing. he started feeling he was he not remembering as well so he stopped mm -hmm. in the meantime he became a poet um, starting at I don't know age 80 I think <laughs> he retired and then he started taking poetry classes and loved it so much and he self-published I helped him his first book called a full life and then at the age of a hundred he we put together his second book a, a new path that was um, published by Ibbotson Press here in Somerville mm. and we used to collaborate together because he would he wrote um, poems about many different parts of the world that he was familiar with mm -hmm. and so was I yep. and we had a, a thing we had a we performed often together actually it was quite lovely. Um, so I wanted to read for you one of the poems he wrote about me, because he, he has written about three of them. It's called, she, and this is from A Full Life. So where, where people can purchase if they will be interested? Um, actually, I think it, they can get it from Amazon. I need to uh, send new copies, because I think they have used copies. OK. Um, but I can put new ones in there. Right. And so Amazon okay. is the place. Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Joseph A. Cohen, mm -hmm. A Full Life and A New Path. A New Path. She plays like an angel. A radiant smile adds a glow to the music she plays. Her soul pulsates to the beat of the derbeke, the haunting rhythm of Sufi chants and the wild tempos of Greek island music. Poised and confident, she plays many bowed instruments. She brings to life music in danger of being buried by the roars of pop music. She sleeps well, this princess of world music. Like an ethnomusicologist, she form, performs music of past eras, so authentic, so rich. Like a bird, she flies from coast to coast, continent to co continent, playing exotic music. She visits foreign lands to study with master musicians and to unearth hidden treasures. For this, the folks of Turkey, Greece, and Egypt weave for her a tiara seen only on brows of queens. Beautiful. And then we know that you have a jacket from Cairo you mentioned. Yes, this is an Egyptian, Egyptian. jacket, yes. Yeah. Yes. So we have time to um, present another poem. Oh, nice. Yes. Do you have any requests? No, it's just up to you. Uh, let's see, what else would be nice to... Um, maybe Giuseppe. Oh, I love this poem. Actually, this is the one, Giuseppe, that my father and I performed together. Because you'll see, there's violin in here. Giuseppe. My father uh, um, fought for, I think, three years, 1942 to 45. Um, against uh, Hitler, and mm. he, it was very important, and very important for him to do that. Yeah. Um, but he also, because he was a kid growing up mostly in Brooklyn, he was enamored of Europe. He was mm. so thrilled mm. to be in Europe. It opened his heart. Giuseppe, with the invasion of Anzio imminent, all leaves were canceled. A performance of Tosca at the local opera house went on without my eager presence. I was engaged in waterproofing our anti-aircraft cannons when he strolled by, cranking out O Sole Mio on his fiddle. On his fiddle. I asked if he played musica classica. With pride, he replied, Si, signore. How grand it was for me to have a private concert while serving overseas. Dis dismissing my gun crewmates, I volunteered to finish invasion preparations alone 
while enjoying music by Beethoven, Mozart, and Bach played by an Italian street musician. Amid the roar of planes giving us cover, while swarms of small crafts loaded, churning the waters of the port of Salerno, he lifted his bow above the violin and waited for one full minute before playing Bach's Concerto for Violin No. 1. Hours later, he was wrung dry from playing beautiful music in an atmosphere far from the quiet dignity of a concert hall. I rewarded him in the only way I knew how, by drowning him with candy, smokes, and army-issued towels. Before midnight, the 451st AAA Battalion boarded an LST and steamed up the Italian coastline in the glare of a full moon to land behind Nazi lines at Anzio. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, how many instruments in total in a collection you have? Uh, 30? About. Yeah. Probably, but I mean, I don't, yeah. You didn't count. I haven't counted. <laughs> I've had students who counted. I see. <laughs> Little kids want to know exactly how many. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your performance. It was just a pleasure to have a morning concert. Oh, thank you yeah, so much. And a live concert. So, and I know the viewers will appreciate it. And um, we will add some videos you sent to us. Lovely. So then they will have more music of after uh, our talk. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was my honor.